Life of Chance podcasters. Here we have Lane Lanos, <laughs> Lane Morgan. Thank you so much for joining us. How has your morning been so far? Morning's been good. I just got back from the gym, so trying to finish off the top ups from this week that I kind of missed out on. So it's been a good morning, pretty cruisy, and I sleep enough to training last night um but it's been good so far nice and what are you training what team are you training in at the moment uh waratahs so hopefully we'll see you back soon but um into the super w season so with the waratahs into our 2024 campaign which is super exciting and hoping to see a big change this campaign Awesome. Um, so we'll just start off this little podcast with some quick fire questions. Um, I say it to everyone every week. Um, feel free to give as much of an explanation, a justification, or just a simple answer. I don't mind. Um, obviously, they're not all as quick as I say they are with a quick fire <laughs> around, but here we go. <laughs> all right. Um, what's your nickname? Lanos. It can yeah. come along a long way, but Laurie started that one, so it's stuck now. Nice. We love Lanos. Uh, what was your first rugby club? Um, Hunter Juniors, so with seven. So I played with them um, and Meriwether Carlton back at home for 15s. Nice. How old were you when you started playing sevens? Sevens? I was about 16 years old. Cool. And then 15s, when did you make the jump into oh, that I, I trained a whole pre-season for at 16 years old and they decided to change the age and I had to miss a whole year of rugby and wait till I was 17 oh. but that was the first and last year I'd played until I was 20 okay so you played at 16 and then you had a little break and then you came back to it and was the break based off your choice or because there was no accessibility yeah, there wasn't really any accessibility until about um, 2018 with 15s and I was playing a lot in Sydney. So um, I didn't really know about Jack Scott Cup then and I was playing with Ramwick. So we didn't have a team yet. So we were very heavily sevens based. Cool. Um, what sport did you play before rugby? Um, heaps. Uh, my main one was touch football and I did play netball, but um I was trying to dance when I was young and that didn't really work out. I've got two left feet. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of dancing? Oh, mum was trying to get me into ballet, contemporary jazz. I think my favourite was gym dance. But other than that, the, le- the instructor was kind of like, look, I just don't think this is Lane's forte. And I was like, you don't have to tell me twice. So I've kind of got the gist. Um, I'll get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so um, yeah, but um, tried to do a bit of kickboxing for a year, but um, touch kind of took over and then Rugby Union came. Nice. Uh, when did you debut for the Wallaroos? Um, I debuted, gosh, every year is just merging into one now. Um, last year was 2023, so 2022 when it was a World Cup year. Nice. Uh, what's your cap number? Oh, you're testing me. It should be 17, I think. I want to say 17. Who won oh, seven? Number. Hold on. 188. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say. How many caps had I got? Like, and uh, many games. Uh, yeah. But no, 188. Take cap yeah. number 188. Is that, do you have a tattoo of it? I sure do. Yeah. I, I am. <laughs> Yes, but girl. Down the ankle, little hiding one. Um, but yeah, that was a little fun little trip at the end of World Cup. A few of us went down and decided we've got a day off. Let's go get tats. Yeah, I was gonna say when I asked you for your cat number, I didn't think it was a trick question because I was like, I'm sure she has a tattoo of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, how many games? I was like, oh, chance it's really hard. And then I was like, oh wait. <laughs> Ah, nice. Uh, did you have any heroes growing up? Um, not too many, hey. Um, I think my biggest one is like the really cliche, my mum. Um, definitely looked up to mum. She's such a strong person and um, can get through any battle, any challenge and is honestly was my life coach. I was like ch- talking to Brandon the other day, trying to make a decision and 
I was like, oh, I'm just going to give mum a call. And he's like, oh, you life coach. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think she's definitely my hero. Um, but yeah, I didn't have too many growing up. Yeah. Did you have any role models or people you looked up to in sport? Doesn't have to be a woman, just someone that you were like, you idolized through sport. Um, definitely as I got older in the rugby union space, I didn't really have anyone in any other sports, but, um, Illy. So it was pretty cool back in, I think it would have been 2017, 2016. Um, she was a guest speaker at a dinner and I'd just been selected to play for New South Wales. And I was under 18. I was about 17 years old and I was going to women's first instead of youth. So I was very da- um, like daunted and quite nervous by the experience. And I got told, hey, go sit next to her. She's our um, kind of guest speaker. Soak up as much as you can. And I was like, this chick is awesome. She's played sevens. She's played 15s. Like I wanted to be just like her. And, um, and she's a number nine. Of, yeah, and number nine. So full circle moment like to come into the squad at 2019 for Waratahs for preseason and um, be competing with Illy and continue that journey and be mentored by her but also developed as my own player which is pretty special and not many people get off um, you know the player that they're competing with so she's definitely been um, someone I look up to in sport and such a big mentor in my rugby career. Oh, that's so special. I hope Illy listens to this and hears that. I'm going to make yeah. sure she does. <laughs> <laughs> um, hobby outside rugby? Um, I love to cook. <laughs> so I am the chef out of me and Brandon and I will do meal preps. I'll cook dinners, treats. Um, I love Christmas time or any time holidays because it's the one time that I will be like going ham. I think I made four different desserts, but I made double of everything for both families for Christmas. And I was like, this is the best. And, but I'm there like definitely licking the spoon. I'm like, no one cook with me because this is all my treats. At the end of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love cooking um, and definitely really into the gym at the moment. I think um, one of my good friends, Sequoia, um, she's a WBFF athlete, well now FMG, and she kind of sparked my um growth in the gym and my love for it and I've just really gotten into it and the whole recovery prehab and um like building your body to be its best and unstoppable so I love the gym if I could spend an extra two days at the gym I will (laughs) like that I have seen that growth in you over the last what year or so definitely in terms of your your passion for the lifting like and seeing the strength and the growth in you has been really cool yeah it's so cool like definitely um just that competing and beating those weights that you've done before and like pushing yourself because you just don't understand how capable your body is when you train it and that's what I love and my biggest thing like you're capable of anything when you put your mind to it and when you give it time and to see how much strength I could go up when I actually put in effort to the gym and was really diligent with it and not just going in and going, I need to tick X, Y, Z boxes and being like, no, I'm going to warm up and I'm actually going to take my time and finding out like how to gym properly and get the most out of it was unreal. And I absolutely love that and preach it to as many people as I can. That's really cool. Favorite music or song that you're listening to at the moment? Oh, I am so bad with song names. <laughs> you must but, have seen if you don't remember the name. <laughs> oh, gosh, I've got like a dead cat's voice inside of me. <laughs> I will not be singing, but I really like Jack Harlow's new song, but I think I've overdone it and burnt it at the moment. Um, Or, hold on, let me check what it's called. It's so rogue. People would not expect it. I'm a big fan of Fred again, but my new gym song is CFB by open till eight it's okay so what, what kind of genre are we talking drill <laughs> okay love that for you <laughs> if you could be any animal what would you be oh see I always want to fly but like flying would be so cool 
so a bird but then I'm like oh I don't want to be a bird I want to be a lion like I want to be the most like the thing that everyone's scared of and be able to do all the cool things and imagine running that fast and doing all that that would be unreal so you want but to be then, a lion with wings <laughs> yeah pretty much a lion with wings but then I absolutely love my two favorite animals are orangutans and cows because they are so chilled out like and being a cow imagine like the floor is your food that is unreal. Like everything is edible, your whole surroundings. Like how cool is that? Like if I could just be a cow that like wasn't affected by anything, like I wasn't a farm cow or anything like that. Like I was just free. Free um, range cow. Yeah. Just eating 24 seven. How cool would that be? And I have seven stomachs, so much room. <laughs> are you a brown cow or like a dairy cow? Like are you black and white spotted or are you? I'd probably be black and white spotted. I'd be a dairy cow. I but I don't, want to be, don't don't put me in a dairy farm <laughs> this is so rogue lane most people choose like a lion or a dolphin or a meerkat and here we have a cow I <laughs> wow <laughs> I think it's like I'm so full on with life and like non-stop and like I love to eat but as an athlete like you have to watch that so I'm like imagine just like chilling out all day eating all day whenever you want having seven seven stomachs of room unreal it's fabulous just fabulous <laughs> what is your um like biggest pet hate excuse me in a team environment um biggest pet hate oh I think it's not really little but like it's a big one um just because obviously we have so many new girls coming in um for Waratahs like we used to be in demountables like we're not even allowed in the demountables we had to put our bags outside and we didn't have anything like it was chuck your bag out the front and get on the field and go hell for leather then see you later go home sneak into Um, the demountables to go to the bathroom yeah, literally, or like trying to go in to see if I can get a yogurt up when I've traveled down and the bloody locks on it, the padlock and the chain on the fridge. And I'm like, oh, but um, the new facility and how Waratahs have welcomed us over the last couple of years is just unreal. And I am so thankful for it and grateful for it and really respect the space. So I have a pet peeve when people just like leave mess and I'm like look at this space I have a locker like I have somewhere where I can put myself you have somewhere where you can put yourself just, just in there yeah yeah <laughs> but nice. um, definitely like respect if like um disrespective space like it's just a pet peeve for me like pack your stuff up like we have fought so hard to be here and put up with so much stuff like be nice respect it yep. let it go because it can be great oh yeah I like that one. That is a good pet yeah. peeve. <laughs> um, beach or snow? Beach. I still. Early... I had my first day in the snow the other day when we were in um, Dunedin. That was yes. unreal. But I still want my hot weather. So I'm yet to actually go in the snow. So I can't really say Same. snow. Yeah. But... Yep. Beach. Early morning or late night? I want to be an early morning person, but I'm so late night. I I struggle to wake up in the morning, but late night. And then night in or night out? Either. I could do either. I probably do nights in more and I would like to do more nights out, but, yeah, either. Okay. Birthdays or Christmas? It's a little bit selfish to say birthdays, isn't it? No. Because then it's all gifts for me. That's but okay. I do love um the feeds at Christmas. So probably Christmas. Nice. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Easy. <laughs> How do you sleep? Do you lie on your front, your side, your back? I am such a roly poly person in bed. I will sleep any which way. 
I'm usually on my side, but then my shoulder will get sore, and then I'm on my back and then I roll over and I go on my front and then that's not good enough. So I'll change that night. No night will ever be the same. It is so annoying because you're like moving every like second to find which night, which spot are we going to be in this night? But uh, I cannot pin it down to one. How old are you? I'm 25 this year. Ooh. So 25 at the Ooh. And have you ever had a surgery because of rugby? Um, no, I've had one because of touch football, um, touch wood. Um, but yeah, I only, I like super minor, but my hand, I tore like the ligament in between it instead of tearing actually took a chunk of bone out because it split so far so I had to get that um screwed back in but yeah I've been lucky enough to go without surgery for footy which is great doesn't put away injuries had a lot of those but um no surgeries nice well that is the end of our quick fire section So now what I want to talk to you about is more like your journey. So everyone um, playing women's rugby at the moment um, at the top level has sort of been through a lot of, um, I want to sort of say challenges, but also like we've made a lot of decisions. It's it's our choice that we want to pursue this game um, at the top level. And it's, yes, there are in some cases we might call them sacrifices, but I, I like to think of them as choices that we make because we love the game. Um, so starting off with you, um, maybe not at 16, but when you started again playing rugby at 20, Wait, you played seven from sevens from 16, didn't you? You didn't stop playing yeah. sevens. So you basically yeah. started playing rugby union at 16 and yeah. really started playing 15s when you were 20. Yeah. 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 So um I'd I loved sevens um and played for a really long time and went um not as high as I'd like. I think I did national um, development stuff. So I was with the Aussie development teams playing um, other countries when they'd come down um, and went to the youth comm games and a lot of um, international tournaments for invitational teams, um, which was such awesome experience. And I also played for the Australian uni team. Um, But in through 2019, just went through a pretty hard time at home and personally and to the point where I didn't think I was going to play rugby anymore and kind of I was living in Sydney for the time for about a year and um, decided to move back home and possibly hang up the boots and I had a call from 15s from Matt Everard saying hey we um, really liked your game again in the city country match Um, we'd love for you to come into Tars into the squad and train pre-season with us and um, coming into that 15 space it's such a different culture and as much as it's both rugby it was so different like my love was sparked for rugby again and this new game and new learnings and new challenges to make my way from bottom to top um, was really exciting for me and um, I definitely took that opportunity with two hands but from back in Newcastle and will hopefully be moving to Sydney very soon. So you make a drive from Newcastle to Sydney three times a week or do yeah, you stay the so, night? Um, yeah, so stay the night. So we train Mondays. I'll do up and back um, Wednesdays and then Thursdays. So I'll couch hop <laughs> whoever will take me. Um, and then generally we'll have a Saturday session as well. So there was three days a week and prior to that, even with sevens, it was three days, but I didn't stay the night because I was generally in school. Um, <laughs> so I've actually been traveling since I was 16 <laughs> minus one year um, back and forth from Newcastle. So two and a half hours each way in the car. Wow. We five hours times three or four each week yeah. of driving. It's, it's a big slog. So it's about 15 to 20 hours in the car. Um so it's a big commitment, um, unfortunately, due to study and um, rugby, I just hadn't had an opportunity where I could earn enough money to be able to rent in Sydney. So it kept me in Newcastle. Um, 
So it was definitely a big challenge. Like it's such so much like 20 hours of your life, almost a full day in a car where you could call people, <laughs> um, listen to podcasts or just listen to music. And um, it was definitely, it's definitely a huge sacrifice. And I've just been feeling it these last couple of t- um, months, especially on the toll on your body because you're gymming and training so hard, like to your max. And then you're in the little car and my little Mazda two cramped up for two and a half hours after. So it's not really good for your body either. And like the extra training you could do in Sydney and the time that 20 hours that I could put more towards rugby, I just don't get. So I think now I'm finally in a position financially that I can move. So I'm looking forward to finding a rental in the midst of the rental crisis in Sydney. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, it's really exciting and hopefully we'll get down to Sydney very soon. What an incredible commitment. Um, What do you do? So you you mentioned music, podcasts, call people. What do you listen to? Are you like, how do you tick the time over? Um, Or use it constructively, I suppose. Yeah, it's. Look, I tried to use it constructively and like listen to uni lectures, but it was like in one ear and the other. So I definitely um, sacrifice probably as much of its like usefulness because when you're traveling for that long and it's after a long day, like I would finish, I'd start, I'd go to the gym probably 6, 7 a.m., go to work 9 o'clock till about two and then leave for Sydney 2 30 so when you're doing that all morning and your mornings are constant you really just want to switch off like you want to have that time where you can just mellow out so I listen to like probably more light-hearted podcasts if it was a podcast music I could listen to anything my favorite station is Triple J so that explains itself it's such a big genre of different songs um and then I was in a book club for a bit But then when um, I started driving with people, so Charlie, she is a development player um, with Waratahs and currently in our squad at the moment. And she would join in with me. She's about, she's 17 this year. So for the last two years, she was, could not drive at all. So I definitely take her in and just drive her up. So the book stopped because I was like, I don't want to bore you when I'm listening to this book and you're like, what is playing? Um, so it was more music and lighthearted stuff that we wanted to listen to. You beauty. Um, what? So what what do you like what do you do when you're not playing rugby? So you've worked in a few different jobs as well as study. Talk me through the work and then the study. Yeah, so I worked with um, Australian Sports Nutrition for about five years um, and that was all over New South Wales. So I worked in from Singleton all the way up to places in Sydney um, when I was available to go there and when I lived there for a little bit. Um, So I worked with that business for a really long time and unfortunately just due to the increased commitment to rugby for um, Wallaroos and Um, university with my placements it's just was I was in a part-time role and unfortunately like they just couldn't commit to keeping me and being so flexible Um, but they were for the last five years and that was unreal Um, so I ended up going into F45 and working with them which was an awesome opportunity but again the times just really clashed because I was getting back at midnight and the trainings were like 4 a.m till 7 and I was like I can't do this with four hours sleep so um at the moment in the last two years so since 2020 like mid 2022 2023 um I have been able to sacrifice a job so um, living at home, which is really convenient, not having too many bills. Thank you, family. <laughs> um, I haven't worked as much, but I've still been studying. So that um, time frame to study got to increase. So I was studying part-time in teaching and I've been able to put on more subjects and be able to study that and just get casual work on the side, whether it's helping out with like um, my partner, Brandon, his business and his socials and working with that or um, just any little jobs I can get around, which is really handy. So 
Um, at the moment, it is dedicated to uni. I'm in my last semester and just got um, all online so I can leave and go to Sydney because I was with Newcastle Uni. Um, but yeah, it's been hectic outside and just when I'm home, just trying to spend it with my partner and my family and get those little hobbies in that I love just to give some time to me. And so it's not just rugby 24 seven and study and hard work. I've got to have that little bit of fun on the side. Absolutely. You do. When you were working with ASN, what was your role? What was like, what was that part-time job? Um, so I was in, so it's like a retail job, but um, I was a sales consultant. So I would help people with their supplements and um, we had a lot of challenges. So like their meal plans, their training plans um, and directing that. And also I built myself up to the manager role because um, I started that at 18. Um, and um, I think after like two years, I started going to like casual manager roles where if managers would go on annual leave or um, stores, um, managers left, I would go in and fill in for that time being. Um, but yeah, so I built myself into that manager role and networking and working with gyms and other things like that. So I loved it. It was definitely something that benefited me outside of um rugby and gave me more knowledge to how to fuel my body um, supplements and what are the do's and what are the don'ts and also around helping other athletes, which was really cool. Yeah, it's definitely something that through knowing you, I have like I've learned a lot from you and I love how much you value what you put in and how that can help you put out. Um, as an athlete yeah. and seeing the way you know you would turn up to I, I take the example maybe of Super W in Coffs Harbour was it 2020 um, yeah. <laughs> and we were in camp um, just in that post-COVID sort of era and yeah. um, you had every kind of supplement and it's like good protein bar and you knew exactly what to fuel for when and I'll have two rice crackers with this for the like can of tuna and then I'll do this and I'll have this supplement now and you've got to have your beta something and it just like (laughs) it was it's really cool to see when something that you're doing to be paid to do becomes such a passion that you implement it into the rest of your life um So I think that's really cool to see that like a job that you did sort of also helped stimulate and, and, and focus you in on how you can be a better athlete. So that, that's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Like I think anyone that's been my roomie through Wallaroo is they freaking love it because I'm like at night, I think I had Laurie last and I was like, here's your magnesium, here's your fish oil and here's your vitamin C's. Like I've got all the HACCP products. Here we are. This is your like late night cap. Finish it off. You'll wake up in the morning feeling good. (laughs) So I think it was pretty funny. And like I got to educate. I got to educate others as well as learn myself. And it was all trial and error too. Like some things I was like, why do we need that? And But then um, like that beta alanine example, like it's such a – um, supplement that people sweep under the rug that is so handy like who doesn't want less lactic acid I hate that thing so um, <laughs> any little things that are beneficial um, I definitely go a highs and lows with the supplement chain too like I definitely think you need those breaks and like come back on and come back off just so your body learns to regulate itself um, but yeah it's really cool and being able to use it in my life and find out how to fuel my body right for sport was so cool yeah, it's so cool. I have to say um, I was Laurie's roommate for WXV and she was making me the um, magnesium drink before bed. So <laughs> you've obviously passed on some very good habits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay, so that's sort of your life. That's the work life and the study life. So study-wise, sorry, we only sort of touched on that. You've almost finished or you finished now your... Almost. Almost. I've got one more semester. So, um, and just additional subjects. So I am learning French um, (laughs) and I have um, a subject with 
traditional Aboriginal. Um, that's what it's called. And I just think it's really good insight because um, like in our schools, like there's so much difference in education and impact you can have having a deeper understanding when you're not necessarily from that culture. So I think if I can add that in, it'll help my teaching go a lot longer. So that was something that I thought I could add and be a bit more beneficial to my teaching. And then one last math subject. So trying to get that one done. Um, I love math, but the math at uni is just on another level. So yeah. <laughs> I'm always a bit daunted going into those. And what what are you going to be qualified when you finish? Um, high school teaching with specialties in mathematics. So I will be a high school maths teacher. Amazing. Amazing. So there is your life um, in the work sense. Talk to me about family. You've got Brandon's your partner. You've been with Brandon for forever. Three years. Three years. Yeah, it feels, it feels like, like forever. forever. But you say three years and you're like, yeah. oh, that's not no, it's not that long. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is long. Um, so you've got Brandon, you've got your mum, your dad, you've got a sister who's married and a brother. Yes. Yes, who will be getting married next year. Ah. Okay. Getting my ears mixed up, but yeah, very soon with a baby on the way and a little niece from my sister already. Amazing! And you live at home with your mum, uh, with Brandon's family. So, okay. uh, Brandon. yeah, I did live at home with my mum from about sixteen years old. We, if you've seen the Gilmore Girls, that was me and my mum. <laughs> uh, it was pretty awesome. So it was hard to leave mum, but um, she moved in with her partner, which was super exciting um out in Maitland so I moved in with Brandon um but yeah I've been here for a while and yeah, yeah it's so good it's so nice and very welcoming his family oh beautiful yeah. um now let's go back into this rugby business so you are a number nine have you always been a nine in 15s Yes, always. I think um, coming into 15s, I wasn't really given the choice. Um, it was like kind of like slid in. But then um, through club, I got to experience a little bit more. Um, I played 13 and doubled in number seven. <laughs> what a great <laughs> position. Yes. Um, looking up at the scrum and seeing you and going, what are you doing here? And I'm like, <laughs> try and catch me. <laughs> and you definitely caught me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I love playing other positions. I love running with the ball and I do miss that from playing nine, but I know um, I can give my best effort and I have the best skills in that area. So if that works for the team, that's what I will do. So that's kind of how um, I got into number nine. But yeah, I think I've doubled in a lot of different ones, playing a little bit of 10 as well, but I've always been with Bella in whatever team I've played. So I pretty much, she played 10, I played nine and that was our combo, which was really cool. Um, and then sometimes I'd go into the centers with Georgie and that was always fun and um, yeah, hang off the edge of a scrum and just dive into rucks, which I love as well. <laughs> How good is that? Um, okay, so you, you've you dabbled in a few positions, but you're ultimately a nine. Um and I want to talk to you about like your representative journey. So you said that Matt Everard called you in 2018. 2019. In 2019. And before that you were playing sevens. Yeah. Were you playing any club 15s at in 2018? Yeah, with Ramwick. So I think that was the first year we um got a side together. Um and it was kind of like we saw how um, 15s was taking off, like the Super W Arena and Jack Scott Cup really wanted to expand and our coach was like, look, like you girls can play 7s and 15s and I think we need to help, like you girls are playing rugby, we need to help the growth of 7s and 15s and you girls can play that, you have the availability and the time, let's create a team and we were kind of all for it and, um, it was really cool because our coach had a strong connection with seven. So a lot of the sevens girls um, like Demi and Shannon and a few other girls would come in and play with us and train with us, which was an awesome opportunity as well. So um, getting started in that Ramwick 15 side was unreal. And it was a very different style of rugby we brought to 
um, Jack's got cut because yeah. we were predominantly sevens um, and very um, new in the forward pack. So um, our lineouts were even different. So I think we had Eva Kapani and we just uh, decided to overthrow the line out and cut all the way to Eva running under the ball. We're like, oh, we've got Eva here. It's fine. We just like <laughs> do the work. So um, it was pretty cool. And we got to go to a few grand finals and obviously play yourself in um, Sydney Uni. Um, unfortunately, still um, didn't get a um, Jack Scott Cup um, winning medal, but um, definitely challenged you guys because unfortunately there's such – different um teams in Jack Scott Cup and such different levels um but it was nice the competition grew and there's definitely like it went from a top two to a top four and now it's like a top six which is awesome and there's so many new teams coming in this year which is super exciting but yeah um Ramwick was my first club and then that joined in with um Waratahs so you played Waratahs 2019 um 20. Pre-season 2019, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Got it. So you played two years of club basically and then got a call up to join in with the Waratahs. Played Waratahs in 2019, 2020, sorry, 2020, which was the yeah. Coffs Harbour. Was that Coffs Harbour? Or was that um, one? It was pre-Coffs Harbour when they wouldn't play, they didn't play the grand yeah. final. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Played Waratahs 2020, 21, 22, and then when did you join the Wallaroos squad? Um, I was pretty lucky enough to be picked off the back of 2020, so my first year with the Waratahs. So that was really exciting, um, but unfortunately it was during COVID, so there was no test matches until 2022. So two years of hitting yo-yos and training and running around with no break <laughs> as you knew um but yeah it was such an exciting time but I definitely think um uh very fortunate with COVID to be able to develop my skill because um like I don't think I would have been ready at the time I was definitely someone that was looked at hey um we uh, they saw potential in me and saw potential to grow me as a player so I took those years to really grow my game and get better and understand the 15s game because it is so different to sevens and um, fortunately got to debut in the first game back in 2022. Against Fiji. Yes. All right, yeah. Yeah, so cool. I think we had 16 debut in that. So it was awesome to be a part of it and it was such a new style of rugby we brought to um, the Wallaroos, which was cool as well. Yeah, really cool. So as a number nine, what do you like, what are your, what are your key focus areas in terms of like, like skill and reading the game? Like how does, how does Lane Morgan prepare to be the best nine that she can be? Um, It's definitely changed over the years. Um, I think with the women's sport, there's a lot of skills that we don't, develop because we're thrown into a position at the age of 17 instead of learning from when we're a kid and you like I kicked the ball around but then I went through a phase where they didn't want me to kick because they wanted me to focus on something and I kind of lost that skill so through seven so um with being a nine and coming into the space being a newbie it was a lot on passing um and cheat lines so not necessarily because at sevens you run behind because you're passing the ball so far back. You don't really cut through because you could not, you're not going to make that gain line as often. Um, so definitely running on the field and being able to find your way through that and being able to read the game and understand the actual process of playing because it's so different. Like sevens, you just swing it to one side, try and have a crack at um, beating someone on the out or in and 50-50 chance. Like do you get it where 15s, it's a lot more calculated and a lot more to it and how you want to build phases. So it was a lot about learning that side of rugby. Um and but it's really exciting this year. Um, I've been learning about um kicking and trying to bring that more into my game. So um box kickings, um, eight, nine off scrums, 
and just like little grubbers that I could incorporate in my game. And then also um, I had a very big running game when I first came into 15s. I ran a lot with the ball, but it wasn't necessarily style that we played at the time. Um, So I was learned a lot to, you know, pass off the deck and just get it delivered most of the time because that was the biggest skill that I needed to work on. Um, But this year I really want to bring back that running game and that selection because I know when I see it, I can execute it but I just need to get that confidence and um, understanding of the game of when it is available to run and when not to run and also changing that tempo. And tempo is a big one for me this year because at TARS we always go fast, 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 fast. We have that thing of, you know, less than three second ruck. So now when we were at Wallaroos, I think it was a big change in my game last year where I could understand like, hold on, we don't need to play fast here. We can slow the ball down just because it's available. doesn't mean we have to go. Um, and learning that side of rugby, more the technical calculated type of stuff. Um, but yeah, so many learnings and I never want to stop learning. So it's pretty exciting. And um, a lot of eight, nine combo that hopefully will come out in Wallaroos at uh, Waratahs this year um, at the back of the scrum with Piper that we've been learning some tricks so oh watch that space yeah. um yeah watch the space <laughs> um what is your like favorite like do you have like a, a a passing drill or something that you do to like activate your like nine skills um before a training session or do you just like whatever it is you just pick up a ball and have a bit of pass and your eye eye gets in um I think it's definitely different for each training um I love the drill where you're um, kneeling, so you're one knee down, one knee up, and you've got the ball just outside that knee on the ground and just following through that upper body because so many times girls will um, try and pass with their lower body. They don't really actually engage their upper body, which is really odd because you're passing with your arms, so why don't you use them? But um, just making sure you understand that power and that engagement of the muscle Um, and shooting through because that's my biggest thing like you can see when nines get lazy we start to drop our hands and the pass isn't as crisp or it's not getting to like the perfect spot and it's something that every nine wants to work on there's never there's not one nine that would be like I don't need to work on my pass because it is such an integral part of our game like we are the delivery we are the um like composer of the game we determine who gets the ball and when and where so um no one's pass would ever be perfect as much as people would compliment them I don't think any nine would actually be like yeah it is perfect we always want to get better yeah great I love it I love hearing players talk passionately about their position because they're I think sometimes we forget that there are intricacies to every role um, yeah, hundred percent. Like, and we get either too caught up in our own job, or you know, like you just sort of forget that there is there's a thought process for everyone, um, particularly at the top le- top end. Um, I want to go through a couple of my classic questions. Um, when and I, you have referenced quite a few examples throughout this chat so far, but when have you taken a chance? And don't mind if you re go over. A, an answer either no that's okay um I think currently um I am taking the leap to move back to Sydney which is quite daunting for myself just because of uh, my previous experience um it's definitely overcoming a lot of obstacles and um a lot of challenges I had so this move is probably my biggest chance I'm going to take and it's without Brandon as well. So I'll be moving by myself and Brandon will be staying and eventually moving to the Gold Coast. So I think that's the biggest chance I'm going to take this year and also um, heading into the teaching space. Um, Everything's always been um, with um, a supervisor and someone like my last placement we did last year I had like a block of eight weeks of teaching where I was just in the class or six weeks where I was just in the classroom by myself um, but now I don't have that supervisor I'm going in and they're just trusting me so um, I'm really excited um, it's definitely a challenge as a casual teacher I remember back in school I'd be like yes I'm not going to do any work like I'm going to get over this casual teacher but I'm like I'm not going to do that like I still want kids to learn and also um, 
gain experience from having me as a teacher, especially um, I'll be going into Matraville High, which is a sports school. So um, I want them to be able to see how, hey, you can play sport and go to uni. You don't have to be the sole, oh, I'm going to play footy and I can't get an education because I'm a footy player. Like you can get an education. You can do whatever you put your mind to. Um, you don't have to solely be a footy player. Um, you can be whatever you want. So I really um, am excited for this chance coming up and the, chance, and the leap that I'll take. Um, very daunting, but I have such a good support network around me that I'm really excited for it. Yeah, that's awesome. How exciting. Like firstly, to be challenging yourself to do something that doesn't necessarily have a great memory in your mind, but also how exciting to not be able, not having to drive for the five hours a day. Oh, training. I cannot wait. I'm like, I'm, I did this for the 10 week block of teaching. I was in Sydney and stayed with family and I like got home and I was like, what do I do with this free time? I got to watch Home and Away again. And I was like, this is the best. <laughs> um it was so funny my aunt was like my great aunt I stayed with so my nan's sister and she watched um home and away and one of the old classic shows that was on tv at like four o'clock every day and she's like oh sorry like I just need to watch it and I'm like no I want to you don't understand how excited I am to sit down and have dinner and watch home and away at seven o'clock like I never had this luxury so I was all for it um but yeah just the time I'm so excited Oh, that's so good. What an exciting 2024 you've got in store for you. Yes. Um, something, uh, when has someone taken a chance on you and then why do you think that they have done this? Um, so many people have, like so many people have impacted my career as a person um, in rugby, um, in all aspects, like in work. And I think one person in rugby that, I kind of wanted to touch on was Fidel Tekel. Um, he took a massive chance on me. I think everyone started to hear about, you know, there was tribe rugby who went and played internationally, but they kind of went on the back foot and slowed down and it wasn't really as prominent as it was. And um, Ramwick started to be the next place to be. And um, I was super excited because a lot of um my friends and people that had played with before were going to play with them. And, you know, I was at training and I was like, oh, like, I really want to be asked to play. Like, am I going to get asked to play? And he came down to our training sessions and it wasn't for a while later that I actually got a phone call and he was like, look, I need this position. I think you're um, definitely a great person to join in and would you like to play with us? And I was like, hands down, I was like, if you weren't going to ask me, I was going to ask you because I wanted to play for this team um, because it had so much opportunity to it. And he necessarily wasn't necessarily like the most rugby IQ coach, but he was someone that took a chance on a bunch of 16, 17 year old girls and took us around the world. We went to um, Amsterdam, Dubai, all over um, Australia as a team and grew rugby so much, especially for the area. Because at the time it was Sydney Uni, but you guys were like more in the 15 space and sevens, it was quite um, nationwide. But Fidel really took that step to be like, no, we're going to compete in these teams. And like we went to, I remember going to Dubai, we went off the back of nationals. So everyone really was quite wrecked and, first day we lost every game but one and we were sitting eighth on the table and he was like I didn't pick you girls I didn't bring you here to perform like this and we played um English development um a team from France and um another like national team development team and so like we and we were just a bunch of 17 year old girls from rant like all over New South Wales um, that just loved footy and he was like oh, I know you can be better than this like we're not coming here leaving without anything and next day he turns around and it was quarterfinals and we were eight so we were playing first which really oddly was Kazakhstan and um, they were unreal at rugby they were so perfectly drilled in their kickoff they would kick to the same spot to the same jumper who would get the ball every time and play the same play off it 
And it was really hard to defend because they executed it so well. But when we kick to them, there's no, you can't predict where we're going to kick. We can't give you an X plan. So they weren't very good at reacting to that. So it was like try for try. And we slowly started to read how they were playing so we could shut it down. Ended up going to Golden Point and we scored and got into the semifinal and beat number one. We did the biggest upset. Like they wouldn't even shake our hands. They were so angry. It was insane. Um, and we had England development in the semifinal and we smashed them. They beat us like 46 nil the day before and we just ran through them. I think they must have had their bit of chip on their shoulder going, oh, we're going to play these young girls. Like they're not very good. We just beat them yesterday. Like this will be easy. And we just came out and surprised them. So we ended up going to the grand final against Ireland because they weren't currently qualified for the World Series. Um, and we beat them by a try in the last couple of minutes. And it was unreal. Like it was such a good experience. And, um, you know, without Fidel, we would have never had that. And I think he grew a lot of women's rugby. He helped develop players that not many people wanted to take a chance on. Um, like I think there's probably over 10 girls that have more, like our whole um, team at Ramwick would have, played in either Aussie Sevens, Wallaroos, or um, in the Super W realm. So, and, and NRLW, he's coached as well. So it's so exciting to see the players that he's brought up and taken a chance on. And he took that chance on me. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunities that he provided because I wouldn't be the player and have the experience that as I was if it wasn't for him. Yeah, that's really special. I know Fidel as well, and I know... Um, he's definitely a man you want on your side, not on the opposition. And I've had a, experiences <laughs> in both being in his team and being on the other side. And I do, I have to say, he's a man that will um, do anything for you if you ask. Um, and I have a lot of time for him too. So that's a really nice shout out um, to Fidel for taking a chance on you. It's uh, My next question would just be why? Why do you think he did it? Um, I know he had two daughters uh, um, and Taina was looking to um, play rugby and she was really interested in it and there wasn't really a space in women's rugby for sevens. There wasn't a lot to do when you're necessarily coming into the space. Like yeah. for myself, I had to play Hunter Juniors and then it wasn't for like two years till I got picked for New South Wales and then I could play in national. So um, there was no real like stepping stone and he provided that local stepping stone and that com those competitions and players to play in these competitions and build the sevens um, kind yeah. of realm in New South Wales. So I think he just saw the opportunity and wanted to help women in rugby and his daughters and show them that there is opportunity and um, he's an awesome role model to his daughters. And I think... Um, yeah, you wouldn't rather want you wouldn't want anyone else in your corner. But why did he why did he take the chance on you? Lame oh me. Yeah. Oh, I think I was just this little girl that was playing rugby, traveling down from Newcastle and not really having anywhere else besides when it was representative because for Newcastle we didn't have local sevens tournaments at the time, um, or anything like that. And, you know, he provided me the space to say, hey come play for this team, we'll get you more integrated into sevens. He, he could see a potential in me, which I was very fortunate to have. And, yeah, been yeah. awesome. Nice. So speaking of um, opportunity and I suppose your sort of direction, because you've definitely been someone that's, you know, like uh, you're a determined athlete and you've you've created your own opportunities, I suppose, from your commitment to the game. Um, you now have a manager, don't you? Yes. Yeah. So I'm with Roger Sports Management. Currently. Cool. And how long have you had a manager for? Um, I think just over a year. I think we're almost leading into two, which is um, pretty new for me um, and very new for not many females in Rugby 15s do have a manager. So um, I didn't really know what to expect um, which was pretty exciting. But, yeah, it's definitely been a very good attribute to have. Yeah, because you're now sponsored, aren't you, by um, Body Science? 
Yes. So um, I am sponsored with Body Science and it's been an unreal deal and they have looked after me so much. And um, like from working in supplements, I've always loved their space because they have a space for athletes and will provide for athletes where not many supplement companies will do that. Um, so to be sponsored by them, um, fortunately, Craig, my manager, he got that relationship going and boosted. And um, it's something that I would have had troubles knowing the places to go and how to reach out and doing it properly um, where Craig could kind of step in that space and be like, Hey, like these are the contacts. Who would you like? Um, would you be interested in this opportunity? Because managers don't really um, have a, any issues in knowing what to say and how to get it. Like it's very good because he can bring the opportunities that you wouldn't necessarily have the time to look for or know how to, to you. So um, yeah, the body science one is unreal. I've actually literally oh, got my package today. I'm so uh-huh. excited. Um, I'm waiting to open that. That came in this morning and um, yeah, it's been unreal. And also um, Victor Sports, a strapping company. So I've been with them for a little bit as well. Um, and they're unreal too. Like uh, this, they're so much bigger than just strapping tape. I could get like supplements from them that are Huster approved, um, rehab, ice packs, um, equipment for rugby, like drink bottles, balls and stuff like that. Like it's been so good to have that access that um, normally would be out of pocket for myself. Um, but yeah, lucky enough to be provided for. That's really cool. I think it's it's nice to see that that space is opening up in the women's game as we get more professional, I suppose, more opportunities start to come knocking on the women's doors. So well done you for being proactive and and getting yourself a manager and making the most of it so far. Yeah, thanks. It's um, been really exciting. And I definitely think like um, it's such a daunting space to go into. So like if you are looking into it, have conversations with people that have had managers, but I definitely think it can benefit you because my thing is, is um, like I'm still studying. I don't really know what to say or how to reach out to people. I have the time to actually be like sit down and know and what I need and discover all that where the manager, he's on your side, he's working for you, he's promoting you um, and he wants the best for you as well. So why not have that person that's backing you and helping you and assisting you when you're trying to focus on being the best athlete you can be? Um, but, yeah, I definitely think um, have a chat to people that um, have experienced it um, because there's definitely a space that can help so many athletes. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay, final two questions. First one is what is a piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Um, Probably like you're capable of anything you put your mind to. Um, Growing up, I never was really the naturally talented athlete. I was a little tubber and (laughs) was running around trying to play sport with friends. And um, I really wanted to make rep teams and I always was trying and I think a big thanks to my mom. She made me such a resilient kid that I got knocked down from so many teams. I didn't make a rep side till I was a teenager in high school. So um, she was always the one to be like, no, keep trying, like keep trying. You'll get there. Um, It might not be now, but if you keep working, you'll build those skills that you don't necessarily have um, that aren't like from what a naturally talented kid would have. And even with maths, I wasn't the best at maths in school. I got told you're going to be behind in high school unless you go and source outside assistance. And um, they called my mom and she put me in math programs and it luckily got me ahead um, by the time I was in high school. So I really want to be that person for kids that um, isn't necessarily like, hey, you need to find a way. I want to be able to be like, no, there is a way, let's search for you because that's what I wish I was constantly told when I was a kid. You're capable of anything you put your mind to it. If you want to be, if you want to play sport, but you've got two left feet and dancing, you'll be able to do it. You might be uncoordinated at life, but on the rugby field, if you train hard and focus on those skills, you'll you'll nail it. Like um, whatever you put your time into and your mind into, it'll pay off. Um, like even with maths, I tell the kids at school, I'm like, because they're all sporty kids. I'm like, you love sport. 
and you want to get fitter, what are you going to go do? You're going to go run. Like you're going to go do fitness training. Okay. So I know you necessarily don't like maths, but you want to get a better mark in maths. So are you taking that extra time to practice some questions? Like, are you going to actually take time in class to do it? Because if you're not, if you're not going to go run, you're not going to get fitter. So if you're not going to do a couple of questions and put effort into it, you're not really going to learn much, are you? So if you can put your mind to things and give something a little bit of time, you'll be able to do it. You can do anything. So yeah, definitely you're capable of anything you put your mind to. Good piece of advice. And finally, what are you doing, be it reading, watching, listening to, or a hobby outside of rugby that is challenging you or making you think? Um, uh, to be honest, enrolling in French. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why. I was like, you know what? It's a great skills. Um, so many countries speak um, French, so mm-hmm. why not add it to the list? Um, I think I did sign language for another elective once And I loved it. I am really bad. If I don't upkeep it, I don't learn it. Like I just said, you've got to put your mind to it. Um, But um, yeah, I think just trying to learn new skills and whether that's through uni or um, at home, like I love that. And I think one thing at the moment that I'm trying is cold showers every morning. Brandon does it like a breeze. And I'm like, it is like the whole mental thing, like, oh, that's freezing. I don't want to do that right now. But like trying to reset that because I think um, men- the mental game to rugby and to life is so huge. Like you could go and do a Bronco and not train that much. But if you've got your mind switched on, you will overcome most obstacles. And even though you mightn't be the fittest in the team, but your mental game is switched on, you could beat that person that is the fittest but doesn't have a strong mental game and I think that's what I'm trying to build on is my mental game and that's keeping me on my toes and so yeah cold showers is the new challenge um to switch that mental space over but yeah just little challenges like that it's pretty fun with with the cold challenge do you put your head under or is it just body I put my face in um as a girl it takes long to dry Mm. this hair so yeah if it's a dirty hair day I'll go under but if it's not a dirty hair day yeah I'm just fair. and how long do you how long do you stay in for um I try and just go as long as I can I go a minimum um 30 seconds but um whether it's like oh, I have to brush my teeth well let's yeah. do it in the shower so <laughs> I will have to be in there to do the cold shower so um yeah I try to go for as long as I can but just like um in no less 30 seconds. love yeah. that Amazing. Lane, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Um, Have a great day off from training. (laughs) Well, (laughs) ish. Or there's no such thing as a day off, but, you know, a recovery day. (laughs) Yes. Thanks for having me. I love being on this and love hearing all the other girls' podcasts as well. So super excited to watch your space and your podcast coming up. Um, But, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, Lane Oss.